Hi folks, my name is Baku Hagedorn from Applied Mathematics. Today I would like to do a short lecture on the binomial distribution. Allow me to share my screen with you. The binomial distribution is a discrete distribution. That means that it has a valid probability mass function. The outcomes in this distribution look like little masses of probability. So the first outcome is x1. It has a probability p of x1. The next outcome, x2, would have a probability p of x2. And the last outcome, x3, would have a probability p of x3. Discrete distributions have um, two properties. Firstly, all the probabilities are non-negative. Meaning that the P of XI are greater than or equal to zero for I equals one to three in this case. And summation P of XI is equal to one meaning that these three probabilities add up to one. These are properties of all discrete distributions. So the binomial distribution is a special case. It's a special discrete distribution. The binomial distribution is used when you have n independent Bernoulli trials, where a Bernoulli trial is a trial that has exactly two outcomes. a success and a failure. Let me give you an example of a Bernoulli trial. Toss a fair coin once. Then your outcome possibilities are heads or tails. There are no other possibilities. The only choices are heads and tails. Such a trial is a Bernoulli trial. Another example of a Bernoulli trial would be the birth of a baby. There are exactly two outcomes, two possibilities for outcomes. The baby is either a male or a female. That's also a Bernoulli trial. When you have n independent Bernoulli trials,
This results in a binomial experiment. For example, five babies born on New Year's Day. Each of these births is a Bernoulli trial. And since I have five of these Bernoulli trials, they constitute a binomial experiment. Another example would be tossing a fair coin six times. Six independent Bernoulli trials. Therefore, this is a binomial experiment. In any case, today I would like to talk about the binomial distribution. So here we go. It states that the probability of our successes in N independent trials is given by NCR times P raised to the R times Q raised to the N minus R. Let's take the following example. Actually, before that, let me define the terms in this binomial distribution formula. N is the number of trials. P is the probability of success per trial. And this P is constant. And Q is the probability of failure. Therefore, P plus Q add up to one. The number of trials N is fixed. And trials are independent. Let's take an example of this. Let's say that one, two, find the probability of exactly two heads in three tosses of an unfair coin where probability of heads 
is given to you and it's two ninths. Your job is to find the probability of exactly two heads and three tosses of this unfair coin. So here we go. My N in this example is three because I have three tosses. My R, which is the number of successes, is two. The probability of success per trial is two ninths. That's the probability of heads. I regard heads as a success. Therefore, tails would be failures. And therefore, Q is 1 minus P, which is 1 minus 2 ninths, is equal to 7 ninths. And that's the probability of tails. So the question is, how would I do a problem like this? First thing I can do is draw a tree diagram where the first set of branches represent the first toss. So that first toss could be either heads or tails. And then here's the second toss. Which could be heads or tails. And then here's the third toss. heads or tails. Let's go down these branches. So I am actually taking this branch and then this branch and then that branch. And that results in heads heads, heads. That means all three of them were heads when I tossed that coin three times. And the next one would be heads, heads, tails. So here we are, heads, heads, tails. And the next one, heads, tail, heads. And the next one, heads, tails, tails. And then tail, heads, heads. Tail, heads, tails. And the last two would be tails, tails, heads. And tails, tails, tails. So I can see that there are eight different arrangements that are possible. Where does that eight come from? That comes from the fact that each time I toss, there are two possibilities. So there are two possibilities on the first toss, two possibilities on the second toss, and two possibilities on the third toss. That means there are eight possible arrangements. Let us pick up all the arrangements that have exactly two heads.
So here is an arrangement that has two heads. And here's an arrangement that has two heads. And here's an arrangement that has two heads out of eight possible arrangements. So the probability of this happening would be two ninths times two ninths times seven ninths. And the probability of this would be two ninths, that's the probability of heads, times seven ninths times two ninths, corresponding to heads, tails, and heads. And here I have seven ninths, because the first one is tails, and then two ninths and two ninths for the two heads. So in all, I understand that that tail could fall in the first toss, or the tail could be in the second toss, or the tail could be in the third toss. So I see that I have three of these possibilities. I just need a little more room here. So the three possibilities are tails in the first position and then followed by two heads or tails in the second position with heads on either side or tails in the third position and the first two tosses being heads. And each time I say or, it means add. So or means add and and means multiply. So I, I'm trying to say the first one is tails and the other two are heads or the tails is the second one and the other two are heads. This time the tails is the second toss and this time the tails is the third toss. And each time I end up with two nines times two nines for the two heads and the seven nines for the tails of course, in different orders. So I have three such arrangements. So my final probability is three because I have three such arrangements with two heads and a tail times seven ninths times two ninths squared. Now I'm not going to want to draw that tree each time. I'm going to go straight to the binomial distribution formula, which tells me that if you have n equals three trials and probability of success p, which is the probability of heads is two ninths and the probability of tails q is seven ninths, then the probability of exactly two heads in three tosses is given by three choose two, P to the two, Q to the three minus two. I'm using this binomial distribution formula that says that NCR P to the R 
q to the n minus r is the probability of r successes in n trials. So three choose two. Two ninths to the two. Seven ninths to the first power. Three choose two is three factorial over two factorial, one factorial, which is just three. And when we clean this up, it results in three times two ninths squared times seven ninths. So let's take it one step further. What if the question was the following? Find the probability of two heads in exactly five tosses. of this unfair coin. I purposely uh, observe an unfair coin so that you can distinguish between P and Q. If I took a fair coin, then P and Q would each be a half and it wouldn't make it clear. So find the probability of two heads in exactly five tosses of this unfair coin. I don't wanna have to draw a tree diagram because now it's going to have so many different outcomes. How many different outcomes, how many different, um, different arrangements would I have if there were five tosses? I would have two to the fifth power, which is 32 different arrangements. And I don't want to have to draw a tree with 32 different arrangements and then pick out which ones have exactly two heads. So I, I will go straight to my binomial distribution formula and say that the probability is equal to five choose two, two ninths to the two, seven ninths, to the five minus two. So let's figure out what five choose two is. This would be five factorial over two factorial, five minus two factorial, because NCR is given by N factorial over R factorial, N minus R factorial. So here I get five times four times three factorial. I leave this as three factorial because it's going to drop. It's going to cancel with this three factorial in the denominator. And I have this two times one in the denominator also. So 20 divided by two gives me 10. Let's go back and write this out. 10 times two ninths squared times seven ninths to the third power. What if the question were, find the probability of at most two heads in five tosses of this unfair coin. So now it's asking me for at most two successes. 
So at most two means either zero successes or one success or two successes where heads, of course, is a success. And each time I had a plus sign there, I mean to say or. So I want the probability of exactly no successes or one success or two successes. So I would actually have to do three of these NCR terms. So here I have five choose zero, two ninths to the zero, seven ninths to the five minus zero, which is five, or so plus five choose one, two ninths to the one, seven ninths to the four, or five choose two, two ninths to the two, seven ninths to the third power. It's very simple to do this on a calculator instead of by hand. So on a TI calculator, you could do this, a Texas Instruments calculator, you could actually do this by going to second function, oops, and VARES. So on the calculator itself, you go to the second function, which is right here in blue, and then the VARES key, which is right here. And you scroll down to the binomial PDF. Actually, it says binome PDF, where you will enter N, P, and R. So in our case, we would write binome PDF five, P is two ninths and R, the number of successes is zero. That goes with this first term plus binome PDF five two ninths one plus binome PDF five two ninths and two. And because we don't wanna to have to do these individually, I could have just said the following. Second function, VARES. And then scroll down to binomial CDF N P R, where C stands for cumulative. So I wouldn't actually have to type all three of these in separately. I could just do binome. CDF, actually, 
this one should also say binome. So let's just go back and fix that. So I'm sorry, this time I'm trying to do all these three in one step because I don't wanna to have to type them in into my calculator individually. I will this time go to binomial CDF where C stands for cumulative. NPR, so my N is five. My P is still two ninths and my R is two. So what this is saying is Take that last one, that last number of successes that you want to include. And in my case, that's two because I'm looking for at most two heads. Take that two and this will add the probability of two to the probability of one and also the probability of zero. So all these three things will be done by this command, binomial CDF, of five comma two nines comma two. So let's actually go ahead and do that right now. So here I am on my calculator. I will first type in the second function. I'm following these, the, this command right here. So second function and then vars which is right here. And then it gives me a list. So I have to scroll down this list until I get to binomial CDF and I hit enter. And then it's my job to put in those parameters. It's asking me for the number of trials. The number of trials is five and hit enter. And then it's asking me for P which is two ninths. Please hit enter. And the X value, so that's our R, the number of successes, and that's two. And hit enter twice. And it gives you the probability is 0.92 three, six. Let's see if the three of these add up to 0.9236. Let's do those. So second function, vars, and I'm gonna scroll down to binomial PDF. I'm gonna do them individually. The number of trials is five. The probability of success is two ninths and the X value is zero the first time around. And let's get that answer. It's 0 0.28462, 0 0.2846 plus, let's do it again. Second function, vars. Scroll down please to binomial PDF. Number of trials is five. Probability is still two ninths. This time the X value, which is our R is one. And enter 0. 0.4066. And the last time, second, vars, binomial PDF. The only thing that changes is the X value. Let's change it to two and enter. And I get 0.2323. And I wanna see if these add up to this answer. So let's see, 0.2846 plus 0.4066 plus 0.2323 and I do get 0.9235. That last digit is due to rounding, 0.9235. So I'm just off in this fourth place after the decimal, which is not a big deal.
So you see, this is how we use our calculator to do the binomial distribution formula, or of course you can enter these by hand as well. I hope this was clear, folks. Thank you very much.